Although, karamihan dito yung mga malilit lang, mga utility vessels that uh, are normally uh, accompanying the big uh, fishing vessels. I think the fishermen, the, the fishing magnates here, if there are any, will be familiar with what I'm talking about. Kumingi tayo ng uh, support for radar, patrol boats, aircraft, and they're talking of increasing uh, their support to the tune of more than $30 million. But what is $30 million that can't even buy an F-16 uh, aircraft? And uh, there's so many noises uh, coming from China. The unofficial, and then the official, and then uh, Daki is very familiar with this. Yung mga China Daily, yung mga publications nila doon that uh, some people say are independent but some people are saying that uh, that actually uh, the the instruments used by the Chinese government uh, to uh, feel uh, to have a feel of what the public, uh, both local and international, would uh, be reacting to. But one very vociferous uh, voice came from a Chinese general, a certain major general, Lu Yuan. He's an active major general, and he made some very hawkish uh, statements. Uh, uh, for example, sabi niya, this does not, uh, uh, sinabi niya rito, no? uh, he was uh, quoted as saying, if the Philippines dares provoke us again, the Navy will attack with both fists, he said, on the same uh, website. Uh, of course, uh, the Chinese government disowned this, but you know, if something like this happens in the Philippines, if a general would make a statement which is contrary to policy, the general would be immediately sacked. So people are saying that maybe makawala ito uh, para lang uh, tatakutin tayo, pero mukhang wala ng epekto sa atin ito. And uh, Chinese warships dock in Hong Kong. Again, a, a show of flag, a show of force by, uh, by China. And here, uh, again, uh, there's a, a rear admiral from China who made some very strongly worded statements and uh, I'd like you to listen to this. Sound, yeah? getting a lot of attention and uh, the message of the Chinese rear admiral is very very clear I think uh, we can uh, read it as a veiled uh, threat to the Philippines China issues advisory talks war with the Philippines no matter and I'd like to quote uh, the statement of the China daily no matter how willing we are to discuss the issue 
The current Philippine leadership is intent on pressing us into a corner where there is no other option left but the use of arms from the China daily. <laughs> and then uh, Secretary Clinton, after the 2 plus 2 meeting, made a statement that the U.S. is committed to Philippine security but won't take sides in maritime disputes. U.S. reaffirms defense of the Philippines in standoff with China. And here's uh, what I'm talking about, the Mutual Defense uh, Treaty. Uh, Article 5 states, for purposes of Article 4, an armed attack on either of the parties is deemed to include an armed attack on the metropolitan territory of either of the parties or on the island territories under its jurisdiction in the Philippines, its armed forces, public vessels or aircraft in the Pacific. Yung sinasabing metropolitan territory would be what we would consider part of Philippine territory, undisputed. Like for example, Manila Bay, Pasig, uh, Sambales, etc., etc. But uh, Scarborough Shoal may be considered a disputed territory and that's a gray area. But however, if you ask me what is not gray, is that an attack on the armed forces, public <coughs> vessels or aircraft in the Pacific, would be considered an attack on the other party also. In other words, if we have a marine detachment in the Spratlys, and the marine detachment is attacked, that is an attack on the armed forces, and that should merit a response from the other party to the Mutual Defense Treaty. A public vessel, a vessel of the Bureau of Fisheries, Philippine Coast Guard, kada civilian yan, or uh, maybe the Coast and Judetic Survey, and of course uh, the, the worst would be a Philippine Navy ship, or an aircraft, a public aircraft, would be considered an attack also. So that is uh, my interpretation of the Mutual Defense Treaty, and that was the way that the Department of Foreign Affairs Secretary also interpreted uh, when he said that uh, it is very clear that uh, the U.S. will support the Philippines under the Mutual Defense Treaty, and uh, he, he presented a treatise of sorts on uh, what he thinks would be the obligations enunciated by the American government with respect to the Mutual Defense Treaty. But of course, uh, there is that uh, oft-quoted uh, statement, Clinton says U.S. won't take sides in sea dispute, but I read that as uh, the arbitration process in the dispute, not the, the possible uh, confrontation that would happen in the South China Sea. And of course, the government, uh, the government uh, has uh, uh, been stressing that Scarborough will not be a redo of the mischief reef. You remember what happened in the mischief reef incident uh, in 1995, the Philippine Navy discovered some shelters there uh, put up by the, Japan, by the Chinese. And when we protested, the Chinese uh, assured us that these were only temporary shelters uh, for their fishing vessels. But after about three, four years, this uh, were transformed, not only into temporary shelters, but uh, physical facilities that uh, are already garrison-like, concrete structures that are almost comparable to the municipal halls that you would see in second class or third class uh, municipalities uh, in those areas. And then uh, there's also an assessment uh, on, on by, some, by, by some third parties that have been observing. For example, Asia Times. There's an article in Asia Times, and I quote uh, how they read the uh, action of China. So when China asserts a nine dust climb claim far from its mainland and close to the shore of some overmatched country like the Philippines and repudiates any form of third-party mediation, the Chinese action is understandably attributed to some combination of arrogance, obtuseness, and appetite for aggression. At least uh, this is what is bothering China right now, because they're, uh, they're reaping a lot of bad publicity internationally. I've been monitoring this and I'm amazed that uh, a lot of countries have been commenting on what is happening uh, in this uh, part of the world. 
this uh, standoff. Australia has come in and uh, they made a statement that uh, the UN law of the sea should be the one that should prevail in the in the arbitration of the South China Sea claims. Indian warships to sail through South China Sea. India has come into the picture. Uh, I think uh, those who are familiar with the Indian-China history uh, would know that uh, there was a war uh, between India and China in 1960, and China clobbered India uh, in that uh, war, and I think that's still very much fresh in the memory of India. But what is happening now is that India is trying to move in and uh, seeking an alliance of sort with Vietnam in order to have uh, an inroad in the South China Sea, especially with respect to some oil development projects there. Now India is getting involved in the China-Philippines territorial conflict. That is another headline. Four Navy ships in the South China Sea to mark Indian presence. They're there. They're going to sail all the way to Shanghai, and I think they're all even going to visit the Philippines and call on the Subic area. So that again is going to trigger some reactions on the part of the Chinese. In the South China Sea, two superpowers flex their muscles, that is China and the United States. Panetta sends message to China on Vietnam visit, and of course uh, the very well-publicized uh, Shangri-La conference that happened very recently where uh, the star of the show was U.S. Secretary of Defense uh, Panetta and he made some statements and it was not only he who made statements there. The Singapore Secretary of Defense made a statement, the Australian Minister of Defense made a statement, the Indian uh, Minister of Defense, Anthony, made a statement also, all urging that this be settled uh, internationally not on a one-on-one -on -one basis. China state papers warn U.S. strategy. And then, of course, uh, the U.S. came out with uh, a publicity of uh, a, a destroyer that is now under construction, a $3 billion destroyer, a, the Zumwalt class of a destroyer, the stealth uh, vessel uh, the the high-tech uh, vessel whose uh, radar uh, imprint is only like that of a small fishing vessel. In other words, if you are monitoring this uh, large destroyer, you might think that it's only a small bunker that is coming in, but it's actually a destroyer because of its stealth capability. And it also is going to feature one of the latest weapons. This is the railgun weapon. It's not going to use an explosive uh, it's, uh, it will just, because it, it can throw at the speed of several times the speed of sound a metal object. And uh, at that kind of a speed, let's say even a car or a, uh, a truck uh, using as a projectile, you don't need an explosive, it will have the effect of a major explosive because of the speed of uh, impact uh, when it hits the impact. It's supposed to be a very uh, accurate uh, weapon. And this is uh, the Shangri-La Dialogue uh, uh, starring Panetta. Philippine-American ties warm amid the South China Sea dispute. And this is where I would like to say that there is an upside to this conflict uh, and this standoff that we are experiencing. I've been always saying that, number one, this has become a rallying point. The country needs a rallying point right now. In the same way that uh, countries that faced adversity in the past used uh, the, their adversity as a rallying point. For example, uh, the existential threat being experienced by South Korea in the 50s and the 60s became a rallying point and became a key to their development. Taiwan uh, had that existential uh, uh, problem also. Same with Singapore in relation to Malaysia. And of course, uh, one of the best examples is Israel that existential uh, crisis that they faced became a rallying point and it made them productive instead of being complacent like what we had been in the past. And of course, uh, the other upside is that we are showing to the world that uh, we are able to stand up against an emerging superpower. 
a lot of people anticipated that maybe the Philippines would capitulate in about one week, in about two weeks, especially not only in the face of the greater military bite of uh, China, but also because of uh, the trade pressure. You will recall that they uh, rejected about 1,000 containers of banana. They also suspended uh, the arrival of tourists uh, in the country. That is about uh, equivalent to maybe about 200,000 tourists uh, annually. But uh, we have not capitulated. Uh, we, we have continued with the standoff. <coughs> Pentagon sense, this is like the winds of war already. Pentagon sends more warships in the Pacific. China warns on U.S.-Australian ties because the U.S. is uh, having an agreement with uh, Australia for the basing of about 2,500 Marines in Australia so that they can be easily deployed in case of a conflict in the Pacific area. So these are this warning. And the U.S.-China Wu India for control over the Asia-Pacific. These are very interesting headlines. And you can see that either some writers are using this to exaggerate the situation for greater leadership or they are very accurately reading uh, what is emerging as not only a standoff but a power play by major powers in the area that would involve not only US, China, but has drawn the attention of Australia, India, South Korea, as well as Japan. In fact, Japan has already indicated that they're willing to give us five ships in order to buttress our Philippine Coast Guard, not Navy, but Philippine Coast Guard capability in order for us to better protect our exclusive economic zone and protect freedom of navigation, which is very, very important to the players in the area. And here, I'd like to uh, end my presentation by showing you the map. Uh, this is uh, actually the jurisdiction of the Pacific Command of the United States. But you can see that the Philippines is almost dead center and can play a very critical role in the power play that is happening right now with respect to control of the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea. The West Philippine Sea is the sea between the Philippines and the coast of Vietnam. I think you're familiar with the uh, geography here. And the coast of uh, China and on the south is, uh, would be the coastline of uh, Malaysia, of Indonesia, and uh, Singapore. And then to the west is the Indian Ocean, and uh, that's where India is coming from. India is also very concerned about freedom of navigation, because uh, in their emerging economic development, they see that it's very important for them to, have to connect very effectively with the other countries to the east of uh, India, particularly the Philippines, Vietnam, uh, South Korea, and Japan. Japan is in the picture. They also have a territorial conflict with uh, China. Vietnam is there. Australia is uh, down south. And uh, one headline that came out very recently is that uh, Australia reportedly has a battle plan already in order to neutralize uh, China in case of a conflict using uh, submarines. And if you ask me, from the naval point of view, one disadvantage of China here is that uh, it would be easy to battle them up because they have a very short uh, uh, coastline and uh, their movement is not as free as the movement of the other players like Australia, uh, the United States, and Japan <coughs> because they can be easily contained and uh, right now they're worried about uh, being surrounded. Uh, the so-called uh, containment strategy with India to the uh, west and then uh, Australia to the south and then Korea and Japan uh, to their north and of course all the way uh, to their east would be the superpower, the only superpower in the world right now. So finally, uh, my recommended action plan when I delivered a privileged speech uh, in the House of Representatives about three weeks ago and number one is to support state diplomacy. But I think right now what is very important is that there should be no discord with respect to the position of the country. The president is the architect of foreign policy. It is being implemented by the Department of Foreign Affairs. The saddest thing that would happen to us is if we have discordant voices coming from sectors because the China Daily and the other China publications have been exploiting discordant voices coming from the Philippines to their advantage. The second is to participate in public diplomacy. 
State diplomacy is the one being handled by the Department of Foreign Affairs. Public diplomacy is what I'm doing right now. If I deliver a speech before the Rotary, if uh, a Rotarian will uh, go to the Rotary Club, for example, of uh, uh, South Everett in uh, uh, wherever, and deliver a speech on what's happening here, that is part of public diplomacy. Uh, Lloyd uh, Nicholas Lewis uh, <coughs> uh, initiating uh, rallies in front of uh, Chinese uh, consulates and embassies, that is also part of public diplomacy. And I understand that China is very allergic to public diplomacy because uh, it is putting them in a negative light uh, from the international point of view. And finally, number three, since uh, DepEd uh, Secretary Armin Lubistro was your guest uh, last week, maybe you can tell him to include as an instruction in both elementary and uh, in high school that we own the uh, Scarborough Shoal, or uh, what we call the Bajo, the Masilo, as well as the Mischief Reef and the Spratlis, uh, some islands of the Spratlis, because that is what the Chinese youth uh, know right now. That's why there's a certain wave of nationalism <coughs> and patriotism among the youth there, because they were conditioned because of uh, public instructions that they own this uh, physical features in the South China Sea. And that's why they're surprised that uh, we are encroaching in uh, what they look at as uh, their territory, in spite of the fact that Scarborough Shoal is only 123 nautical miles away and about 800 nautical miles uh, from the nearest uh, uh, big island of uh, China. So, yun lang po, at uh, sa muli, ako yun papasalamat sa inyo sa pagkakataon na ito na maipaluwanag sa inyo ang aking viewpoint as far as uh, di baho, di masindo po sa ito. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Uh, the Congressman has agreed to answer some questions from the floor. So anyone who will wishes to ask some questions, would you please come up so you can use the mic? Yeah, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, do you think this uh, realignment of the U.S. naval forces uh, would it be beneficial to this conflict now that uh, China and the Philippines uh, having? Uh, secondly. Uh, we have these militants who are always demonstrating in front of the U.S. Embassy. I know it's bad publicity for uh, our uh, country, but how would you pertain this, uh, or at least uh, improve the relationship? You know, the, the position of the United States here uh, in my observation has been consistent, even in the 90s, they, they have been stressing freedom of navigation because uh, the West Philippine Sea, the South China Sea, is very, very critical to the economy of Taiwan, Philippines, even China, uh, Japan, South Korea, and even the United States because if uh, that, uh, that is restricted, if freedom of navigation uh, would be jeopardized, that would mean uh, disrupting the flow of uh, vital commodities, about 200 ships per day, according to statistics. And uh, the, the presence of the U.S. is uh, very delicate for us, because we don't want uh, the superpowers uh, to be confronting each other in our vicinity, because that would be disastrous to us, physically and economically. That will disrupt, uh, we have a trade of Three billion dollars exports and three billion dollars import. Six billion, I'm sorry, six billion dollars import and six billion dollars uh, uh, export uh, to and from China, and that would be disrupted. You can imagine how that will affect our gross domestic product. So, masubuti na peaceful ang settlement nito using international arbitration. But I think uh, the, the the forces that are moving right now are forces that, they, that look at this uh, from the geopolitical point of view, the power play. Uh, they look at uh, the pivot to Asia that the U.S. government has announced, Obama himself, 
as announced. In other words, they're shifting their forces here because uh, they've already, uh, already stabilized the situation in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in the Middle East. So now they're looking at Asia and they're looking at the challenger, uh, China. Now with respect to the militant group, you're complaining about a submarine coming in for a few days' visit. You're complaining about several hundred American soldiers uh, exercising in Mindanao. Why don't you also complain about the Chinese who are in mischief reef? Oh, dapat complain yun yun para patas sa labanan. But ayon na lang complain. I don't know why. There. Right now. Numbers wise, sila ang nandun, no? They're, they have vessels inside the lagoon. Oh, sila ang nakapaligid doon, mas marami sila ang uh, papur doon. Uh, but that is what uh, we are uh, uh, projecting, we are hollering to the world right now. And I think if you look at the, all the media reports, uh, a lot of them are expressing disbelief in the China claim. How could they possibly claim something that is number one, within our exclusive economic zone, and number two, so far away from them. Buti sana kung medyo magkalapitan tayo, no? Uh, like uh, the way uh, we have some conflicts with Malaysia, for example, because of overlapping uh, EEZs. But in their case, uh, our exclusive economic zones do not overlap. They have enough uh, exclusive economic zone. So, yun ang... Uh, <laughs> Para ano, para pong pasig na magkiklaim ng uh, kasabihin nila, kanila yung, yung skyway sa Paranaque, no? parang ganun, ang comparison dyan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm not so much uh, concerned about about Scarborough Shore kasi yung ating parko the biggest um, warship natin yung magandang reverse niya nakakita po ng Chinese ships eh at taras kagad so sepo sepo tayo yun ang mga ating mga mangis na eh hindi naman tutubuhan yan so eh sepo so walang mamamatay sa atin I'm concerned about this properly proper na po if I gather correctly, as as early as during the time of Marcos, meron tayo yung airfield, ano po? At meron din tayong uh, civilians na doon. Kumusta po yung security natin doon? Kasi yan ang bakang tamaan ng ano. Thank you po. Okay naman tayo. I, uh, that's part of my experience, incidentally. I was part of the group that uh, uh, delivered uh, arms as well as soldiers in 1971 to the Sprat List the panahon na yun, uh, right after my graduation. Kaya familiar ako dyan. Okay naman tayo doon, wala namang threat doon. But you know, in a situation where there can be a series of uh, actions and uh, counter-actions, repercussions, siyempre, pag nagkarambola na yan, uh, one, the biggest island there is occupied by Taiwan. Uh, some people are worried that uh, instead of uh, Instead of China crossing the uh, Taiwan Straits, they might attack uh, Ito Aba uh, to pressure uh, Taiwan. And of course, that's going to be very bloody. The same way that they attacked the Paracels right after the Vietnam War to dislodge uh, the Vietnamese there. Uh, pero extreme na yun. I, I don't think that will happen. In the uh, Philippines, uh, I notice it says an attack on the armed forces, but it only says in the Pacific. Is it possible to interpret the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea as not part of the Pacific? No, no way. That's definitely part of the Pacific. The Pacific Ocean consists of several seas, like the Celebes Sea, the China Sea, uh, the Yellow Sea, the Tsushima Strait, even the Aleutians. Uh, that's part of the Pacific. Uh, Wala akong dispute dyan. Ninong Benny. Kong Roy. 
you mentioned on several occasions about public diplomacy. In the other day's article of Big Pasqual, he attended the parade, Independence Day Parade in New York last Sunday. And I read about the Panatag flow until uh, Rodel Rodis, I received the email of Rodel Rodis that it was Lloyd Nicholas Lewis who heads US for Gigi, 